Welcome back. In the last episode, we began designing a system to control when new features are released to users. We created a basic outline of the system. Today, we'll refine this design and examine the specifics of how to build it. We appreciate your input, so please share your thoughts and questions in the comments. This was our high-level design. Feature service is where most of the critical action is happening. But after some thought, we realized that there are two components to our feature service. First is the actual CRUD operations on flags. And second is the evaluation of the flags. While the developers create the flag and configuration, the applications need to evaluate the flag value. So there is one component of flag configuration and another component of flag evaluation. What happens when isset API is called inside some software? The method is supposed to return true or false. To return this, it must first look at the flag name and the past properties. It must then somehow run the input against the flag configuration. Flag configuration is stored remotely, so it makes sense to pass the input to the remote service, which then does the computation and returns result to the SDK. Since this information does not change very much, it can be stored in multiple levels mm. of caches. A good robust system will have more complex strategy where flags that can be entirely computed in the SDK will be computed inside SDK. A good example of this could be flags that are related to just the platform. Egyar flags switched on and off only for iOS. There is no need to fetch this evaluation from remote server, but ultimately we will need a remote evaluation engine. Let us look at what the server SDK look like. The SDK must maintain a local static cache. If there is a cache miss, then the SDK must call evaluation service to get the flag state. The evaluation service will store the result in a Redis. However, if there is miss, it will compute this from the NoSQL database. For all these caches, the key could be a combination of factors for which flag is allow listed. For example, if the flag is only about geo, then the key could be just a combination of flag name plus geo. This is how it would look. SDK maintains a local static variable cache. And when there is a cache miss, it hits the evaluation service. Client side SDK will be different from the server side. This is because client side SDK is on the user's device, which may or may not have access to internet. Hence, we can no rely on real time calls to any service. Client-side SDK has one advantage, that is, it is liked to a specific user and device, which means most of the information to compute the flag value is available right away. This information superset can be sent to the evaluation service. The values of flags could be fetched and stored locally. This storage can be updated periodically. This is how the the client SDK structure look like. It will call the evaluation service, but only occasionally, and cache take flag results locally. However, for clients, whenever a flag state is changed by a developer, the feature service is expected to issue notifications to the clients, asking them to update their flag states. The server SDK model is relatively simpler. It always makes call to the evaluation service, which has Redis as a hot cache. The feature service, which is used by developers, is responsible for invalidating the Redis cache and rely on the evaluation service to repopulate it whenever a change happens. To make the system more reliable, we can also actively inform all active server SDKs about the change to a flag and the server SDK can then clear its local cache for that flag name. This is accompanied by a pub art submodel for a message queue. One of the questions we should consider if there is any different approach. 
Another approach is to look at every user device combination and compute values of all flags for that user. This approach, while simplistic, will not scale well. As even for 1M users, computing, say, 1,000 flags means around 1B storage values. Also, changes to flag states would lead to very high number of writes. In addition of this system, we need to make sure each SDK correctly invalidates its local cache when a flag changes. This can be achieved using the earlier mentioned message queue based pub submodel. Rolling out any flag must follow to canary release system where the changes are deliberately rolled out in stages. Secondly, when a flag is changed, we should be able to see how it has been rolled out so far. Hence, we need a place that stores all the current flag states for all active SDKs. The summary is that we will have two services, feature service and evaluation service. We will rely heavily on different levels of caching and push and pull model to invalidate the caches and replenish them. Given we are told that we will only have few thousand flags, the storage requirements are relatively less. This concludes this video. If you have any comments, please write below. Also, if you have any feedback or if you have any better design in mind, please let us know. If you want us to cover any system design question, let us know and we will be happy to cover it for you.